This video will illustrate how to crash a project with 7 activities down to its maximum crash time. Here's the data for our problem. Stratagema Electronics manufactures drones for commercial use. The company CEO is considering producing drones for the mass market. The activities necessary to build a prototype and related data are provided in the following table. Here we have 7 activities A through G, their normal completion time in weeks, the crash time, which means the minimum time within which the activity can be completed, the normal cost associated with the normal time, and the crash cost which is the cost after crashing the activities. We are also provided with the immediate predecessors so we can determine all of the paths to completion. There are three requirements for this problem. First, is to determine the project completion date. Second, to crash this project to 10 weeks at the least cost. Third, to determine the maximum time to which the project can be crashed and at what cost. The first step involved in determining the completion time is easiest done by constructing a PERT slash CPM diagram. I'll create one using the activity on node or AON approach. Activities A, B, and C have no immediate predecessors so they can all start at the same time. Activity D is preceded by activity A. Activity E is preceded by activity B. Activity F is preceded by activity C. Activity G is preceded by both activities D and E. The project is complete once activities G and F are completed. Now we can determine all of the paths through the project along with their completion times. The first path is A, D, G, with times of 3, 7, and 4 weeks for a total of 14 weeks. The next path is B, E, G, with times of 2, 6, and 4 weeks for a total completion time of 12 weeks. The third path is C, F, with times of 1 and 2 weeks for a total of 3 weeks. Our critical path therefore is path A, D, G, for a total of 14 weeks since it takes the longest time. Now let's proceed to requirement 2 to crash this project to 10 weeks. First, we want to calculate the maximum crash time for each activity, which is simply the normal time minus the crash time. For activity A, the maximum crash time is 1 week calculated as the normal time of 3 weeks minus the crash time of 2 weeks. This means the most we can crash activity A is by one week. Activity B can also be crashed by only one week calculated as two normal weeks minus one crash week. Activity C cannot be crashed at all since the normal time and the crash time are the same at one week. Activity D can be crashed by a maximum of four weeks calculated as seven weeks normal time minus three weeks crash time. The same methodology is applied to all remaining activities to end up with maximum crash times of 3 weeks for activity E, 1 week for activity F, and 2 weeks for activity G. Next we want to determine what the crash cost per week is and we calculate that by taking the crash cost minus the normal cost and then divide by the maximum crash time we just calculated. So for activity A the crash cost per week is $600 calculated as $1,600 crash cost minus $1,000 normal cost which equals $600 and then divided by the one week maximum crash time. For activity B, the crash cost per week is $700 calculated as $2,700 crash cost minus $2,000 normal cost which equals $700 and then divided by the one week maximum crash time. The crash cost for activity C is zero because it cannot be crashed. The crash cost for activity D is $75 calculated as the $1,600 crash cost minus the $1,300 normal cost and then divide by 4 weeks maximum crash time. The same approach is applied to the remaining activities to end up with crash costs of $50 per week for activity E, $1,000 per week for activity F and $250 per week for activity G. Now let's get crashing! Here, I'm listing the activities and their normal times. Then, I'm showing each path based on our diagram. Path 1 is A, D, G, with a total completion time of 14 weeks. Path 2 is B, E, G, with a completion time of 12 weeks. And path 3 is C, F, with a 3-week completion time. Recall our critical path is A, D, G, with the longest time of 14 weeks. Now, I'm also showing the crash cost per week and max crash time for each activity. Notice that activity C is red and I've now removed it from the paths and that's because it cannot be crashed. To start crashing, we begin with the lowest cost activity that can be crashed on the critical path. Activity D, with a cost of $75 is the least expensive and we can crash it by a maximum of 4 weeks, but we'll only crash by 2 weeks right now because we have to be mindful of our other paths. Path 2 is 12 weeks and that path will become critical if we reach 12 weeks or less. 
In the blue area, I'm summarizing my approach, path 1 started at 14 weeks, and we crashed 2 to end up with 12 weeks. We did not crash any activities on paths 2 or 3 so their completion times remain the same but notice now that path 1 and 2 are both at 12 weeks so they are now both critical. So after crashing activity D by 2 weeks at a cost of $75 per week for a total cost of $150, we now have two critical paths, A, D, G, and B, E, G, for a total of 12 weeks and activity D can be crashed by only two more weeks. In our next wave, we have to look at both critical paths and crash activities that are either common to both, or crash activities on both paths. Activity G is on both paths, but it's more expensive than activities D and E, so it's more economical to crash D by two weeks at $75 per week for a total of $150 than crash activity E, also by two weeks at a cost of $50 per week for a total of $100. Now, we have shaved two weeks off each of paths 1 and 2 to end up at 10 weeks for a total cost of $400. Both paths 1 and 2 are still critical, and activity D can no longer be crashed. Activity E can still be crashed by one week if we need to. Our last requirement is to crash the project as far as we can go, so we will continue with our next wave. We still must focus on paths 1 and 2 since they are both critical and find activities on both paths that can be crashed or crash activities that are common to both. Notice here that activities C and D are red and I have now removed D from the paths because it can no longer be crashed. We can see that our options are getting limited. The next least expensive activity is E, but it isn't on both paths, so we have to leave it for now. Activity G, at $250, is the next cheapest and it happens to be common to both paths, so let's crash that one but its maximum crash is only 2 weeks, for a total cost of $500. This now reduces our completing time on paths 1 and 2 to 8 weeks, and G can no longer be crashed so we have to eliminate it in the next wave. For wave 4, there are no activities common to the critical paths so we have no choice but to crash different activities on each path. Activity E is available to crash by one week at a cost of $50, and activity A can also be crashed by one week at a cost of $600. Thus, we have now gotten our project down to 7 weeks, with paths 1 and 2 still critical. Now, activities A and E have been removed from the paths because they can't be crashed anymore. We are now left with activities B and F. B is the next cheapest to crash, and if we did we would reduce the time on path 2 by 1 week, but path 1 is still critical, so we would be wasting our money, the project will still take 7 weeks to complete. The same can be said for activity F. Thus, the maximum time this project can be crashed to is 7 weeks, at a total cost of $650.